My name is Scott Marlowe. I work with the Rural Advancement Foundation International. This is one of our series of videos about disaster recovery for farmers. But for this video, we're really talking to people who work with farmers and in those communities. Maybe cooperative extension agents, farmers market managers, um, uh, folks who are crop consultants. Anybody who's going to be working with farmers through the emergency, through the, the recovery from a disaster on how to navigate these waters over time. The first thing that's important is not to underestimate your ability to be caring and present. Caring and present just means giving people the opportunity to talk. Um, going through disasters is extremely difficult. It's frightening, it's overwhelming, the, it's an emotional roller coaster. And just giving people the chance to talk about it and be heard and have someone who is sitting with them and cares about them and listens is very important to their recovery and very important to them moving through that process. The second piece The second piece is to clarify. One of the things that happens in a disaster is that the details all get jumbled up in people's minds. So when you start to talk to someone frequently, their story will sort of tumble out in all kinds of random details. And it'll, it'll be about their house, and then their farm, and then their livestock, and then this, and then their cousin, and other things. And it'll all sort of jumble together. What's important is the more that someone can help them talk through the story and clarify the story in their own minds, the more effective they're going to be at telling that story to the folks in agencies who are going to need to sign them up for programs or things like that. And that's going to help them move through the process better and get better help for each of these different pieces. So helping folks clarify and, and to tell the story and, and practice telling the story is a really important part of the process. The other, piece of, the other piece of that process is that it's really important to be curious. As that story tumbles out, there are going to be a series, there's going to be a series of details that don't quite fit. Things that are a little hinky, that don't make sense, that you're curious about. It's important to stop and go back and go, wait, explain to me, is, wait, are you talking about your house? Are you talking about your sister's house? Wait, where is your mom now? And things like that. Asking those kinds of active questions and repeating the story back to them. So what I hear you saying is that you were, um, you, you did evacuate, and, but your brother stayed behind and now you've come back or, or whatever those details are. Make sure that you're getting that down. The other part of curiosity is that farmers very rarely only have farm-based losses. And when you talk to someone, what will frequently happen is they will be focused on one thing. They'll be focused on one issue that they're really worried about. It might be getting seed back in the ground. It might be selling livestock. It might be dealing with other things. It might be a, a tractor or a piece of equipment, whatever that is. They may be focused on one thing and wanting to talk to you about one thing. But rarely is that the only thing that's going on. So it's very important to go back through and say, wait a second, how are you? How, how's your family? Does everybody, you know, go back through the basics, the um, food, shelter, clothing, water. Are, are, is everybody okay? What else has happened? And to be able to go through the different types of damage and go through the different things and, and, and be able to see what, the, what, what has happened and to be able to, to, to have that be a part of the story that the farmer is telling. The last piece to know is that this recovery is long term. It's hard, it's difficult, it's going to take a long time. So if you have that relationship with someone, know that the dynamics of the disaster are going to be playing out months, years, after the disaster takes place and that there are huge effects that keep going long after the disaster is over. What I'm going to do now though is, you know, when, when people go through a disaster, usually it's their first time. Maybe it's a second time. 
But we know how disasters play out. They, they tend to follow patterns. And, and this is some work that's come out of Cooperative Extension and some other groups. Um, a really good resource is the Extension Disaster Education Network, EDEN. They're a really excellent um, resource. But there are folks who study this. And there are basically four stages to disaster recovery. And it's important to know where you are in that process because then you can sort of know what to expect. You can know what's coming. You can know where you are, and, and you can have a sense that this is just one stage of a longer term process. So the first of those stages is the heroic stage. In the heroic stage, that's the moment dur the moments during the disaster. That's when we're, you know, people are out and they're helping other folks. They're you know, they're, they're manning shelters, they're helping people evacuate, folks are, are dealing with their houses or their farms. It's right in that heroic phase. And, and what's important, one of the things that's important about that is in that phase, even people who are going through the disaster themselves often are, are, are acting very heroically for other people. And, and that phase tends to put priorities on it. That is, we, we have those priorities of what's really important, the basics, the you know, the, the relationships and, the, and, and lives and that we're here. Um, the other part is that during the heroic phase, it, it often works across a lot of boundaries that may exist in communities. Folks are all working together, folks who, who didn't know each other, folks are coming in from the outside. And it's, it's this sense of camaraderie and emergency that folks are working with. The second phase is the honeymoon phase. The honeymoon phase is the days for the first few weeks following the disaster. And during the honeymoon phase, that's when politicians are coming in and they're saying, we're going to put this back. There's lots of promises of help. There's lots of media and lots of news around it. The, there are lots of agencies there or, or um, a lot of philanthropy or volunteers who are coming in. And there's this sense of things are going to be put back together. Again, you still have these kinds of... Um, like during the heroic phase, you still have partnerships across boundaries that, that might have happened before, but you have people working together in new ways, and it's the sense that it's going to be okay, and you're still sort of riding the, the adrenaline and the high of the heroic phase, and there's still that sense of, well, you know, we're here, it's the relief of having been through it, and, and, and that, it's still that sense of what's really important. After the honeymoon phase, unfortunately comes the disillusionment phase. The disillusionment phase happens anywhere from a few weeks to months after the disaster and can last for uh, a few months, um, six, eight months, uh, even up to the first year. The disillusionment phase is that moment where people who've been through it realize that everything's not going to be put back together again. The politicians have left, the media has left, lots of the volunteers have left. They're now back in the community having to deal with the very large task in front of them. Um, one of the most important things about the disillusionment phase is that that frustration, so you know, as they're, they're trying to navigate the disaster assistance programs that are very complicated, they're, they're realizing that the insurance companies really aren't going to cover everything and they're going to try and give them as little as possible. They're going to discover all of these different pieces. And a disaster expects people to be at their most organized and their most direct and their, their most effective at times when their lives are at their worst. So part of this disillusionment phase is that frustration is going to come out and it's going to come out at the folks who are trying to, exist, uh, to assist. It, that in, the, in this disillusionment phase, that frustration is going to come out at the folks who are most trying to help. The folks in the offices, the people from agencies, the volunteers. And so if you're one of those folks, it's important to know that 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 frustration is probably at some point going to come at you. 
the good news is that after the disillusionment phase become, comes the recovery phase. As people move past this into longer term recovery, part of what's good is that a lot of those relationships that were built back earlier are going to come to play again. Folks are going to come out and they're going to, there's a, a, a sense of taking ownership of the process. And there are a couple of things that really are important about helping folks move from this disillusionment phase into recovery. One is that people are able to both be helped and help others. Another is that they're able to take control of their recovery. They're able to start to have mastery. And so as they begin to have um, achievements and things that they're able to check off and things that they've dealt with, that's going to help them have more confidence and be more, um, uh, and more energy and be able to see that progress. So this is the point at which things come together and move forward. These are general phases, and they can happen in any order, and they can, people can move back around. But it's just important to know as we go through. And, and I've been working on hurricanes since uh, 1999. Part of, this, part of the important message of this is we will get through it. There are folks out there to help. You will get through it, and you will get on to recovery. But one of the other really important parts of this is that if you're someone who has helped others and are, is helping others during a hurricane or during a disaster and following up from a disaster, when we get into these later stages, there are some very intense mental health issues that come up, both in the community that went through it and in the community of helpers. This is a very long-term process. It's going to take years and years. And what we know is that when we hit that disillusionment phase and that movement into the recovery phase, there are going to be some really significant problems with depression, with isolation, with people being overwhelmed. And, and those are going to play out equally in the community that went through the disaster and the community of people who came in to help. So it's important that we don't have these lines between the helper and the helpee. Everyone can give help. Everyone can receive help. And everyone needs to receive help. So the last and most important thing is the thing that we started with. The importance of being a caring, listening, and present person who is there for people to talk to, a, a listening ear, a caring ear. And it's also important that if you're helping other people as you're going through it, that you have the same thing for yourself. That you have people you can talk to, you can have um, a, a ways, a support network for you to be able to work through this, and that you're able to move through and, and provide the help, but also take care of yourself. It's really important that we are looking out for each other, taking care of each other, and recognizing that we're going to be dealing with disasters for a long time. Thank you.